people say in any way in days can loosely be translated to me wherever the road road leads. And this is a modification of the Yoruba adage my grandmother would always tell me, on account of what I do. Now let's discuss why this idea is worth sharing and why I think anywhere Bennett is something you would probably need to start sharing a little more often. Everything about what I said can be summed up in one word, versatility. Humans are multidimensional beings with the innate desire to grow and advance in all ramifications. Each one of us here is a multi-potentialite. Whether you explore it or you do not explore it, it's in you. Miriam Webster Dictionary defines versatility as embracing a variety of subjects, fields, or skills. Now, don't mix it up with NFA saying. I'm going to be using a lot of Nigerian lingua because I'm probably Nigerian. Um, NFA is it means no future ambition. And this is not the same with um, versatility. This isn't this one to very separate things. You see, the human mind, your mind, my mind, is what is under this skull, under this turban, under this skull, inside my brain, is a set of cognitive faculties that handles consciousness, imagination, perception, thinking, judgment, language, and memory, all housed in our brains. We control all these things whether we try or we do not try. Versatility powers today's workforce. Versatility in every ramification, whichever industry you're in, be it finance, be it education, be it media, be it makeup, fashion, food business, anything is powered by versatility. The youth unemployment rate in Nigeria is averaged at 23.63% from 2014 to 2018. And there's a projection that by 2020, it is going to increase to about 35, 33.5%. And this is by the Minister of Labor and Productivity on a recruiting day in an interview last year. This is alarming. 2020 is next year. How versatile are you? And I'll paint you a little picture. Prior to 20, 2001, uh, how many of us had a mobile phone in 2001? 2001, anybody? Yeah. Okay. Um, how many of us had a Palito Walkman? You, okay, one person. How many of us had an alarm clock? We had to go to the cafe to send emails if we were old enough to do that at the time. How many of us had uh, recorders? Letter writing, we did that with our hands, right? Okay, and we're in 2019. Between, in 18 years, we, I can boldly say none of us has a stopwatch and alarm clock help. Some of us have ditched wristwatches. We don't make use of these things. Versatility. The mobile phones are embodiments of versatility we carry with us everywhere without even realizing it. The phone has kicked off almost every technology before then. 2001 to 2019. What's going to happen in the next 30 years? There are so many options, variations, the price range. Remember when SIM card, my dad got a SIM card, about 35,000 in 2006. And trust me, we kept that in TM Park, we still have it. <laughs> it's very priced, and he still uses that number because it's too expensive to change. Versatility. The balance for me was struck even without me realizing that versatility was a thing. I recently just stumbled on putting all this together few years ago. In 2013, I was an undergraduate student of Federal University of Technology when I was studying quantity surveying. And well, very academic students. Go to school, come back, go to church. And I needed a new hobby because it was getting boring. If you've been to Mina, Federal University of Technology Mina, you know it is strict. I have people nodding in the audience. It is. I would say the prestigious foot Mina because yeah. it's quite stressful. Um, so I was in the quantity surveying department and I wasn't doing bad, I was a good student. But I needed a new hobby. So my friend said the campus radio was auditioning for the role of newscaster, presenters, producers, or whatever. But I didn't listen to radio much before then. But they were tensed. 
I said, good friend, I said, I'll go with you. I would, I would register to, and we could sit on the bench while you prepare to calm you down, to tell you to calm down. I didn't care whether I got in or not. I'm just here for you. And then you do that for us. I'm like, sure, sure, sure. That's what friends do. I went to the audition and walked out with the job as you just asked. <laughs> and a lot of my friends were like, well, you, did you take this thing seriously? I said, me, me too. I didn't, I didn't take it seriously. And that was how the journey started for me. My head of news then told me one thing and boiled down to versatility. He said, blessing while you're here, learn every single thing you can. And I'm like, how am I supposed to do that and be a full-time quantity surveying student? It's five years. It was five years. It was a lot. And I worked full-time at the radio station as a newscaster. And when there was an opening, the presenter um, had to travel and they said, oh, would you take up this show? I said, sure. And I learned presenting, then reporting, then outdoor broadcasting, then news editing, then script writing, then audio production. So at that point, there was nothing in a radio house I couldn't do, but I had a degree in quantity survey. I went to NYC and in camp I presented the news because it was 6 o'clock, nobody could see my face, but the camp my dad came to look for who 1,000 was. That was my number. And when he met me, he was like, this is all. And I said, yeah, this is all. I expected it to be bigger than this. And I was like, I was like oh, unfortunately, this is, this is all the is to, to, to see. So he said, uh, where do you want to be posted to? I said, wherever. He said, oh, the, the best radio station in the area at the time. And he said, I'll post you there. I said, okay, I started wanting to something until your degree doesn't matter. The essence of this story is to tell you that your what you learn, skills you don't necessarily take seriously, may or will pave way for you yeah. where your degree will yeah. not pave way. Yeah. I've been in rooms I didn't deserve to be in, or I felt I didn't deserve to be in. I've been in places that my age mates <laughs> weren't going to even get into the building. I've gotten applause from people that I don't even know. And it's not a respect thing, because a lot of us wanted to translate into monetary benefits immediately. Let me blow your mind. I volunteered at Search FM. If you know Search FM, that's the official campus really of United States, um, Federal University of Technology, for free, for three years. And they paid stipends once in two months, just to cater for your transportation and just to encourage you. So it was more about the passion. And I think that experience made me a lot more selfless than I could ever be in my whole life. How selfless are you in your quest for versatility? Now there's benefits to learning a new skill every now and then. Yes, I'm now, I can now work in any radio station. Yes, nobody asks me for my CV, um, not necessarily. Eventually they'll ask for my CV, but you see quantity surveying there, and they say, oh, they're a QS graduate, and I say, would you let me speak for five minutes? <laughs> not pride, not being egocentric, but because I put in the work Five years. I graduated in 2017 with about four or five years of working experience. That's sort of to get in Nigeria. There are benefits of learning a new skill. First, you become more adaptable and open to change. There's this thing I always say is do not tie anything to your chest. Nigerian expression, don't make everything bother you so much. Literally, when you're worried, your chest starts to hurt. Who else feels hurt when you're worried? You physically start to jitter. It helps you become more adaptable and open to change. What will be, will be because anywhere in the left is. <laughs> Two, you become a more fascinating person and relatability to various people. You can talk to a child from singing Baby Shark to an elderly person. You can talk history, you can talk economics, you can talk politics, you can you can give a health tip, you can tell someone, oh, if a virus stains your outfit, scrub a little lemon on it and it will fade without spoiling the color of your fabric. These are all little skills you do not learn in a classroom. Oh, you do not necessarily pay for it. The internet is on our fingertips. What are we doing with it? Thirdly, it helps you become better at learning. It's funny to say that practice makes perfect when you're talking about learning. It helps you become better at learning and you learn to learn quickly and more effectively. Your brain starts to connect the dots. How many of us did quantitative reasoning 
in, in here, it was quite a frustrating situation. And anybody didn't tell me their child because I meant here. Okay, thank you. You know how it is. I just like, oh, 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 go and be comes to Not because you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't you know, and you're just like, oh, I can't pull my hand. So it expands, that's what it does. It expands your thinking. You think outside the box. Because who knew that um, one, three, five has a pattern to it? You would have to think about that one another way. So it expands your thinking and makes you easy, and your learning easier. You have a better idea of what you want to do. There are people at 19 that have a clear pattern of their life, and there are people at 45 that don't know what they want to do. Yeah. No, Focus, so. direction isn't about age. No. It's about knowing what you want to do. And experimenting a lot of things, positive things I dare add, is going to give you, gives you the opportunity to know your clear hot goals. You don't, you may not have all the blueprints. I don't have the blueprints in my life, but I know the things I enjoy doing. I know the things I don't enjoy doing, and I stick to that. Learning engages the mind and body and helps keep our neutral pathways active, reducing stress levels and potentially delaying the onset of dementia. It keeps your mind active. You're always thinking about something. You walk in a room and you're connected. Oh, if this happens here, this goes here, this goes here. Now, that can be categorized as overthinking, but you can look at it as a way of flexing your mind, despite entertaining me. It's, it's interesting, like walking in and I'm, I'm thinking, if you count the square meters, every tile is about 300 millimeters. So the total length of this room and the width is probably like, uh, maybe you say 5.0 by 11.0. And nobody, you're just smiling and nobody knows what you're going on in your head. You're having a brain workout. Six packs for your brain, people. It's not about the body. Get six packs for your mind as well. <laughs> Have you ever seen the Swiss Army knife? Have you? I know there are nail cutters that are made in this, uh, with this pattern of having a lot of things, cute dogs and babies that are really good. But a Swiss Army knife, this is what a Swiss Army knife looks like. A Swiss Army knife has a large blade, it has a small blade, it has a cock screw, flat head screw, bottle opener, wire stripper and bender, hole punch, reamer, key ring, tweezers, and even a toothpick. One small knife. It could fit in your back pocket. It has all these things, and it was given to people that went to war. Again, versatility. So I'm going to leave you with this. Versatility is vital for everyone to maintain a competitive edge. Versatility is important in every ramification your business, your work, your religion, and in entirety, who you are is expanded by your versatility. So today, I'll urge you to be a Swiss Army knife, and don't forget to get a mantra that says, anywhere, anything. Thank you.